you look at this, and what we do here is not necessarily give out the Herbie Awards. Do that in the postseason. Yeah. But the guys who are the favorites as we enter this college football. Yeah, and it's just kind of like you said. It's a great debate, great discussion about who the teams are, who the players are. You could literally, every one of these categories, come up with 10 or 15 names. And a lot of times it's fairly repetitive. So I just try to spread it out a little bit and create some discussion and dialogue like we do every year in August. Well, let's bring some juice right off the bat. And let's start with our first category on the Herbies. The most exciting players we hit the preseason. Yeah, this is the player, one of the players that every time he touches the ball, you kind of hold your breath. Adrian Killens, UCF. He and Greg McRae, by the way, could be in this category. He's a teammate and plays in the backfield. But what I love about Killens is he can also motion out and play as a wide receiver. Bottom line is, when nine touches the ball, you better be ready to be able to close down that gap in that space. Rondell Moore, just an incredible player last year, was a true freshman and exploded onto the scene. Game I was fortunate enough to be able to call against Northwestern. You knew right then he was going to have a special year. I didn't realize he'd go on to lead the nation in receiving, and I think uh, most of us are very excited to see what he has as a sophomore. Tylen Wallace, last year, if you didn't get a chance to see him play much, it seemed like every week he'd come up with big plays. Big play after big play. I think it has a lot of people excited. They're breaking in a new quarterback, but with the skill they have in the backfield, the receivers that they return, number two again this year, who's going to put up big numbers in Stillwater. The Herbie Award for most exciting player goes to Purdue wide receiver Rondale Moore. Kirk, you mentioned a lot of Rondell's stats. I think the thing that makes him so electrifying and the most exciting players we start the season, he led the nation in yards after the catch, too. Yeah. His balance is extraordinary. He can, it, he touches it, and it's just, you lean forward. Well, he has the quickness, and you've seen him under a squat rack. So when you combine the low center of gravity, the power, and the quickness, I man, you better corral him quickly, and you better run to the ball carrier. You're not going to be able to bring him down with one man. You know, Rondell Moore is one of those guys that you see, I mean, games his team's going to win, how much attention he gets. How about nominees for the breakout stuff? Well, we just talked about Wallace and Stillwater. How about his teammate in the backfield, Chuba Hubbard? Hubbard last year backed up Justice Hill. Now he becomes the guy. And watching his speed last year, we got a taste of it. He went over 700 yards. This year, you can expect big things from him in that offense, where I think they'll have a very balanced attack. I put Kellen Mond on this list because last year, you and I called that game against Clemson. There were moments when you would look at him as one of the top quarterbacks maybe in the country. He's in his second year this year in Jimbo Fisher's offense. I expect a monster year with the receivers that they have returning. Kellen Mond is going to be a lot of fun to watch with Texas A&M. And I think Dylan Moses has a chance to be one of those Alabama linebackers that we always talk about. You go back as far back as you want to be. This is an angry defense that needs a leader in the middle of that defense. And I think 32 can provide them that and also the intangibles to be able to make that Alabama defense special. The Herbie Award for Breakout Star goes to Alabama linebacker Dylan Moses. An extraordinary athlete at linebacker, and as Kirk mentioned, he has taken on the mantle of the leadership. He's probably going to have a freshman playing beside him, so he's not only going to have to make plays like that, he's going to have to run the defense. And listen, I'm just going to be honest. I think it's addition by subtraction. Mac Wilson's a talented player, but a little bit immature. So him leaving, I think, helps elevate Dylan Moses to a different level. How about the ultimate game changer nominee? He's got a unit to start. Yeah, where do you start with the Auburn mm -hmm. defense? You just saw him recently. Yep. I mean, you can't just pick Derek Brown or Marlon Davidson or Nick Coe. You, I just said, you know what? Let's just throw the whole unit in there as being a game changer. Usually you think about individual players, but with Auburn's defensive line, I think the most talented in the country, I think it's the entire group that makes him a game changer. Travis Etienne. Before we get all excited about Trevor Lawrence and Justin Ross and all these wide receivers, because they're all great. They may have four first rounders out on the, at wide receiver. Please don't forget about nine. How much stronger he ran last year. He's had another year in the weight room. I think Travis Etienne has a chance to be the most, one of the most special players in the entire country. And Jerry Judy, another group much like Auburn. It's hard to single out just one, but I think the more you're around this team and the more you realize what four can do, he reminds me a lot of Amari Cooper or Calvin Ridley. His route running to me is the best in the country. So I will put Jerry Judy of all those receivers as one of the ultimate game changers in the won country. Won the Bolitnikoff last year. The Herbie Award for Ultimate Game Changer goes to Clemson running back Travis Etienne. Etienne, 24 touchdowns last year. I think that 
went a little overlooked with all the drama surrounding the quarterback change from Kelly Bryant to Trevor Lawrence and the way Trevor played once he took the reins. But this guy's legit. Yeah, he is. Like I said, he, he put um, so much more strength. His first year, a couple years yeah. ago, he just kind of exploded on the scene. He was just fast. Last year, I thought he did a really good job of being able to kind of read his blocks, more patience, and more power. In fact, in that Syracuse game where they were pushed to the brink, he made a few plays late in that game, running through arm tackles. And then as the year went on, it became really about Trevor Lawrence and all those receivers and ETN. And you're a defense coordinator. Where do you start? Mm -hmm. They spread you all over the field, creating that space. And they give Trevor Lawrence now, second year as a starter, a chance to look at that coverage and say, OK, let's run nine. Or you're worried about nine. Now we got one-on-one -on -one opportunities. Now we just throw it up to those wide receivers. We're so glad you're watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports and analysis, download the ESPN app. And for live streaming sports and premium content, make sure you subscribe to ESPN+. Plus. We'll see you there.